Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge M640 Blade Server, and we're going to do a general overview on the CPUs and memory inside. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge M640. If you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get started. Um, this is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, Blade server from Dell's 14th generation. Uh, there's two CPUs inside. It uses an LGA3647 socket, uh, which means that you can use Intel Xeon uh, first or second gen scalable processors. Um, as far as the uh, memory is concerned, it's uh, DDR4 memory. There's uh, 16 DIMM slots inside. Uh, you can use a number of different speeds, uh, 2133, 2400, uh, 2666, and technically if you put in uh, 2933 or 3200, it's going to clock down to 2666, so just know that going in, uh, that that's going to be your max. You can technically put them in, but just wanted to throw that out there in advance. Um, as far as different types of memory you can use, you can use two types of memory. You can use ECC registered, also known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced memory, known as an LRDIM. Uh, there is a distinct advantage with load reduced memory, uh, load reduced memory as far as the scalability, because with ECC registered, the max you can get is 512 gigabytes using 16. 32 gigs at 2666. However, with load reduced, you can actually get four times the scalability and get two terabytes of RAM using 16 by 128 gigabytes at 2666 um, speed. So uh, now that we know a little bit more about the memory and the CPUs, let's go ahead and open it up. I want to show you the, the channels, uh, if you weren't fully uh, maxing it out, how you would actually install and configure it. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. You really never want to be inside a machine without some sort of protection, so I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, let's open this bad boy up. You want to push right here and slide the top back. You'll see a little opening appear. Lift it up, and boom, you're done. I do want to note, um, as far as uh, some of the information we're going to go over, uh, if you look at the diagram that Dell's provided here, it gives you a ton of extra information uh, as far as the just different slots, uh, CPUs, uh, all that kind of stuff. So here there is some nice uh, diagrams, and there's also another memory diagram over here as well. Um, so there's some good information on here, uh, just straight on the lid. So um, I, I do appreciate that Dell does that. All right, uh, now that we're here, as we discussed, there are two CPUs inside. This is CPU 1 and this is CPU 2. CPU 1 controls the 8 DIMM slots over here, 4 and 4, and CPU 2 controls the 8 DIMM slots over here, 4 and 4. This gets you to 16 overall. In order to access them, you're going to need to remove the air baffle. So you're just going to want to pop this up and put it to the side. Okay. So as we discussed, this is uh, CPU 1 and there's 8 DIMM slots. Within the 8 DIMM slots, there's actually 6 memory channels, uh, which is a little bit unique. Um, you don't hear that all too often. So all the white slots uh, that you see, so uh, right here is uh, A1, A2, A3, come back around, A4, A5, A6, all those are the start of the channel. And then when you come back over here, you have A7 and A8. So that uh, right there uh, would be the the, uh, the channels as a whole and then when you come back over here uh, all your B channels will be the exact same except for they're just going to be um, you know flip flopped in there and and their uh, B so you're going to have B1, B2, B3 and then you come back over here you're going to have B4, B5, B6, B7, B8 Real easy, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and actually uh, install them. Um, and one of the things that I like to always tell people as well, as a little tip, I like to have all the tabs open. It just makes it a lot easier when you're installing the RAM uh, to make sure it's open so that when you are trying to insert the RAM, you don't have the tab potentially fighting you or you're having to fumble around and try to do it while you're holding the module. Uh, you just want to try to keep the parts in the uh, server as safe as possible, right? Okay, the next thing I wanted to note, um, we're, we're putting in 32 gig registered here. Uh, so this is uh, not technically the max, uh, but it is um, 
uh, the max were registered. So uh, if I wanted to put in load reduced, uh, you could put in, like I said, uh, 1,628 gigs. So all right, one of the things I wanted to note before we get going, you'll see this uh, notch here, also known as a key. This key is very important because this key, while it looks like it's in the middle, it is not uh, perfectly in the center. So you have to make sure when you're installing the modules that you line them up properly, or you could damage the uh, dim, or you could damage uh, the um, uh, the dim slot itself. Neither are, are a situation that you want to be in. So in this case, it's going to be this direction, and we're going to install it into A1. And another thing I like to note is you need to hear these two clicks. Those those clicks let you know that you have fully inserted the module. And I'm going to show you again. If I put this in here, it looks like it's in, but you can tell. You see how this tab right here is fully in, and this tab is still sticking out. That means the module is not fully seated, so the leads don't have a good connection in the socket. And if you don't have a good connection in the socket, then it's basically uh, going to register it as if it's a failure, and it's it's not a failure. You just need to make sure that the module is fully seated. So that's a, a very common error that we always point out, um, and we kind of stress the point sometimes, uh, just because it is. Uh, just one, I mean, it is the main user error that we, we see all the time. And I tell people, hey, I, I've done it plenty of times myself, right? It's a, it's a, a natural thing. So, all right, we're going to fast forward and just show you how easy this. is. All right, now that we've gotten the first eight done for CPU 1, we need to come to CPU 2. Now, CPU 2 uh, does have a, a small um, obstacle in the way, and you need to come right here to push these two blue tabs, and you're going to lift them up. And you need to be very careful because this has a cable that this is you see back here that's running to it and is hooked into the board so you really need to be super careful right now um, so this is uh, one time that uh, I'm gonna kinda go decently fast because I don't want to um, uh, have that thing laying there like that and potentially damage anything so I'm just gonna start cruising along here and we're gonna fast forward so one thing I'm gonna note before I put this back on I like to double check all my tabs so if you see all these tabs, they all are flush. Every once in a while you'll see one jetting out and that's when you know that it didn't uh, get seated properly. So we're gonna gingerly put this back in nice and safe. And it goes, on. there's a couple of little um, rivets that come up that you just push this right in. You're gonna hear a little click. Okay, and now this is safely back in. All right, we're gonna put the air baffle back on. You can see these little notches right here. You're just gonna line them up and it'll just drop on uh, perfectly. And then you're just gonna put the uh, top back on. And really, as I said, this is a, is a really easy process. Um, and this is one thing uh, that a lot of people are looking to upgrade nowadays is the 14th gen with some of the 15th and 16th gen around the corner coming out. Uh, if you need any upgrades for, for your M640 or even anything else that you're looking for, uh, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We have a wide variety of memory for uh, you know 13th and 14th gen as well as a bunch of you know 10th, 11th, and 12th gen for that matter. Uh, so thanks for stopping by. If you made it this far, hit that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks again. Take care.